I don't even have a problem with Joaquin Phoenix. It was just a bad speech. Actor Joaquin Phoenix just won an Oscar and he gave an acceptance speech which is going viral around Facebook, so we're gonna talk about that here. If you don't know Joaquin Phoenix, he's a very successful actor, but he's also a deeply troubled human being. He had a whole portion of his career where he had a total meltdown. Nobody knew what he was doing, he was getting thrown off of talk shows, and the movie he made was ridiculous. There was a porn scene, he's pissing on camera, and it damn near ruined his career. Fast forward, that deeply troubled individual got to be in a movie called The Joker. So before we talk about his Oscar acceptance speech, let's talk about that train wreck too. Now if you like The Joker, you're probably looking at it differently than I am. Here's what I'm looking at. The Joker was a great movie about a deeply troubled weirdo, perfect for you Joaquin, who lived with his mom, was a basement dweller, had fantasies that he was dating the girl upstairs, and basically bumbled his way through a film. If you like movies about deeply troubled people, this was a great one. But this was not a movie about the Joker. Why do I say that? The Joker is a genius, a mad genius, but we've seen how it should be played. Jack Nicholson played an amazing Joker. Heath Ledger, the genius that put a pen down and said, are you gonna sign the paper? The guy said no, slammed his head and goes, I'll take that as your signature. Some weird things like that where the guy is crazy, but there's a method to his madness and you almost want to root for him because he's that cool. Enter the Joker from 2019. Probably the worst rendition I've ever seen. This guy was a complete moron. He accidentally picked up a gun and dropped it. It didn't seem to me like this was a guy who could stay one step ahead of both billionaire Bruce Wayne and the incredibly innovative Batman for uh, 20 or 30 years as the Joker does in the comic books. This was a guy who accidentally bumbled his way through the whole movie. Uh, he got caught several times. He didn't know what up was down, down was up. He didn't know how to dance. He didn't know if he was really on a talk show or just having fantasies. This guy was a complete loser. That is not the Joker. Comic book fans like me have all come to love. So that was a big fail. Was the movie successful? Yes. Did the movie make a billion plus dollars? Of course it did. Did the guy win an Oscar? Yeah. So does that mean that I'm wrong and they're right? Hmm, not so fast. If you hated the Joker as well, have confidence. Hollywood is pushing an agenda on you. They want you to think they're right you have to push back. If this movie was called The Loser Basement Dweller from Apartment 26, then I'd say, hey, that was a pretty good film. It was shot well, it had cool scenery, and it was a weird tale of a deeply troubled guy. But if you wanna tell me that's the Joker, eh, you're wrong. Plus, look at it this way. The Joker in this movie was about 45 years old. He was teasing and picking on Batman, who was eight years old, in the film. That means when Batman's in his prime in his mid 30s and 40s, he is trying to beat up the Joker who is an 80 year old octogenarian. Does that make sense to you? And he's having trouble beating the shit out of an 80 year old? That's not the Joker. Now when you're talking about deeply troubled characters from thriller type movies, Hannibal Lecter comes to mind. You give Hannibal Lecter an Academy Award and I'm right there with you. So the movie was wrong, the movie was a failure as far as a Joker movie, and it went on to big success. Which brings us to the Oscar accepted speech. Before we criticize it, take a look for yourself. Backing Phoenix Joker. Hi. What's up? Hi. Um, <clears throat> God, I'm full of so much gratitude right now. Uh, and I do not feel elevated above any of my fellow nominees or anyone in this room because we share the, the same love that the love of film and this form of expression has given me the most extraordinary life. Um, I don't know what I'd be without it. But I think the greatest gift that it's given me and many of us in this room is the opportunity to use our voice for the voiceless. I've been thinking a lot about 
some of the distressing issues that we are facing collectively. And I think at times we feel or we're made to feel that we champion different causes. But for me, I see commonality. I think whether we're talking about gender inequality or racism or queer rights or indigenous rights or animal rights, we're talking about the fight against injustice. We're talking about the fight against the belief that one nation, one people, one race, one gender, or one species has the right to dominate, control, and use and exploit another with impunity. Why is social media going crazy over this speech? For one reason only. He gave all the word salad talking points for leftists to clap for. If you just say all those words in one speech, you too can win. Watch, I'll try it. We need to start thinking about the different genders and the people from other countries. And what are we doing about the animals, man? How about some equality out there with income? And let's give health care to everybody too. Plus, save the planet. Thank you. I'll stop it. <laughs> Appreciate it. There you go. An Oscar winning speech and I didn't say a damn thing. Um, I think that we've become very disconnected from the natural world. Now, as you can see from the speech, here is one of Hollywood's most successful, richest actors in the world who can't even make eye contact. He's bumbling his way through this speech. He is doing a rendition of the Joker once again, and I don't know if he knows what the hell he's talking about. And many of us, what we're guilty of is an egocentric worldview, the belief that we're the center of the universe. We go into the natural world and we plunder it for its resources. We feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow, and when she gives birth, we steal her baby even though her cries of anguish are unmistakable. And then we take her milk that's intended for her calf and we put it in our coffee and our cereal. And I think we fear the idea of personal change because we think that we have to sacrifice something to give something up. By the way, Joaquin, it must be nice to be in a position of privilege where you don't have to use milk from a cow in order to feed your family. You don't have to use the products of an animal. But did you know that world hunger would be far worse? People in third world countries don't have this luxury. You hand them a piece of food and they are happy to take it because they don't have the options. So while we can all hope and pray for a better, more efficient food source, for now, quit criticizing people that get nutrition from the only places they can. You're lucky, not everybody else is. Tell that to your nutritionist. And then we take her milk that's intended for a calf and we put it in our coffee and our cereal. Nobody wants a lecture from a nearly 50 year old millionaire on what they should or shouldn't eat. We can make those decisions on our own. I personally love vegetables. I like fruits and I prefer them to animals, but I don't wanna hear how to feel about cereal and how I should change my eating habits every morning. But human beings at our best are so inventive and creative and ingenious. And I think that when we use love and compassion as our guiding principles, we can create, develop and implement systems of change that are beneficial to all sentient beings and to the environment. Joaquin's speech almost makes me want to eat sausage and I don't even like pork. The reason Hollywood is blasting this is because they want you to be confused about what a good speech is and what a good speech isn't, what great talking points are and what a great debate point is and what one isn't. This was just a rich actor mumbling and complaining about animals and food and cruelty. I've been a scoundrel in my life. I've been selfish, I've been cruel at times, hard to work with, and ungrateful, but so many of you in this room have given me a second chance. And I think that's when we're at our best, when, when we support each other, not when we cancel each other out for past mistakes, but when we help each other to grow, when we educate each other, when we guide each other towards redemption. That is the best of humanity.
I just, I wanna, um, when he, when, when, when he was, when he was. We don't need a lecture from you. I could put you and Mark Ruffalo back to back and half the people on the street wouldn't be able to tell you apart. Just hold it up and say, I wanna thank my agent, my manager, my publicist, I really don't deserve this, and I'm gonna get out of here before y'all change your mind. Peace. <laughs> if you agree or disagree with me, I don't really care. Leave it in the comments and come see me. I will give a speech and I'll look you in the eyes. See you on tour.